For East Africa and Kenya in particular, um, radicalization and um, not just um, uh, radicalization internally within Kenya, but uh, also cross-border radicalization, particularly from Somali, is uh, quite a big uh, contributor to the chemical threat issues that we are currently facing in Kenya and East Africa mm -hmm. at large. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as you may have heard, of course, so there was an attack at the Ducit Hotel in uh, January on the 15th. And of course, um, what came to mind was uh, if they were not using conventional air weapons, because the question about a chemical attack is not if, but when it will happen. So um, uh, these radical elements around East Africa and in Kenya really are uh, the greatest threat to um, uh, the region as such. The academia has been involved largely in um, reaching out to um, um, the chemical the chemical players in Kenya and in East Africa, particularly Somalia. And um, this has not only covered uh, talking to the academics who deal with chemicals on a day-to-day -day basis, but they've also reached out to industry and taught them best practices in terms of how to protect their facilities uh, that deal with chemicals. Mm -hmm. However, they have also talked to the informal sector, which is very large in Kenya and in Somalia. Mm -hmm. They've talked to them about um, these dual-use chemicals and how to keep them safe away from the hands of these radicalized elements in the region. Um, they have also gone a long way in trying to talk to the first responders on how do they actually deal with um, you know, uh, incidences where we have uh, you know, a chemical attack so that they're always prepared um, uh, to, to respond. And uh, finally, they've also, the academia um, uh, has gone a long way in uh, talking to the people who actually trade mm -hmm. in chemicals, mm -hmm. especially the suppliers of chemicals, and uh, informing them that some of the chemicals that they are supplying could be benign in nature, but of course combined with other things can actually be very dangerous uh, weapons. Now, the law enforcers, of course, will not work in a vacuum. They work in an environment that um, involves people, you know, who they are protecting. Mm -hmm. Now, their job becomes hard if the people they are protecting are not aware of some of the dangers that uh, chemicals would actually you know, result in. Mm -hmm. And um, working with Kenya Chemical Society, we bring together not just academics, but industry players, mm -hmm. and we are in interaction with uh, you know, the, the you know, cottage industry. Um, um, we are in uh, contact with uh, farmers, for example, who are uh, dealing with fertilizers and all sorts of uh, chemicals that could actually be weaponized. So law enforcement, in this case, can uh, benefit from these interactions uh, where we bring them together with the other community that we are in interaction with. And um, they can also now give their perspective on how to approach you know, um, um, trying to minimize the use of chemicals being used to attack um, uh, uh, the populations in, in Kenya or in East Africa as such. Also, um, in our engagements with the law enforcement, we've uh, come into conversations with them in terms of how can we help them in terms of disseminating information that they think is not so sensitive um, uh, and will not cause a security risk um, uh, to our members and uh, the industry at large. Thank you.